In the last two lessons, we have looked at the alkane family and we have looked at the alkene family. So in this lesson, we're going to look at the next family of compounds, which is alcohols. As always, we are going to look at um, three things, structure, bonding, the physical properties, the chemical properties. Now for alcohols and carboxylic acids, we're going to look at one more um, section which is called the preparation that means how do we prepare alcohols and how do we prepare carboxylic acids now we have learned that alcohols uh, or members of the alcohol family they actually contain a feature and the feature is your OH group or your hydroxyl group all right or in other words it means that the members of the alcohol uh, homologous series they actually have the hydroxyl functional group okay now instead of asking you to derive the general formula now i give it to you the general formula of alcohols is cnh2n plus one oh all right that means that um, for an alcohol with one carbon atom it will have a molecular formula of c h3 oh okay the name of which we have learned is called methanol Alright, for the next member of the family, an alcohol with two carbon atoms, you would have a formula of C2H5OH and it has a name of ethanol. An alcohol with three carbon atoms would have the molecular formula C3H7OH and then it's called propanol. And lastly, uh, an alcohol with four carbon atoms would have the molecular formula C4H9OH, and then it's called butanol. So in order to know the molecular formula of uh, any alcohol in the family, we can just refer to the um, general formula and substitute in the value of N, which is the number of carbon atoms. Alright, let's try uh, maybe something slightly more difficult. So, um, an alcohol with 11 carbon atoms. So, N equals to 11. So, that will give us C11H23OH. Okay. Now that we have um, learned how to obtain the molecular formula of the first four members of the uh, alcohol functional group uh, let us try to construct the structure all right meaning um, how the atoms are actually arranged in the alcohols now for the first member of the family uh, methanol uh, bear in mind that alcohols contain this functional group OH functional group so I'm going to draw it in first okay and it contains one carbon so the carbon must be connected to the functional group and then um, we're going to fill in the rest of the bonds with hydrogens so again carbon can have four can form four bonds so the structure of methanol will look like this next i'm going to construct the structure of ethanol again i'm going to start with the functional group okay it is connected to a carbon now there are two carbon atoms so the two carbon atoms must be connected together and then we're going to fill in the rest of the bonds with hydrogens so we need to check how many more bonds um, does each carbon need to be stable All right so the carbon at the um, end will form three bonds the carbon in the middle will need two more bonds and we're going to fill up with hydrogen all right so this is the structure of ethanol next we're going to look at the structure of propanol propanol um, again it has this functional group oh and then it has three carbon atoms that are connected together and we're going to fill in the rest of the bonds with hydrogens Okay, and similarly for butanol, you, we have the 
OH functional group we have four carbon atoms and we are going to fill up the rest of the bonds with hydrogens okay so these are the um, first four members of the alcohol family with the structure uh, of each um, molecule now this is what we have done in the last uh, slide we have managed to draw out the structures for the first four members of the alcohol family now the way that we have presented the structure of each molecule here is given a name right it is called the full structural formula or um, in some textbooks they call it the displayed formula okay they mean the same thing okay so what, what exactly is full structural formula or displayed formula is that uh, every bond in the structure must be shown so whenever we ask for a full structural formula or displayed formula um, you need to show every bond in the molecule all right now the most common uh, mistake that students will make especially in drawing alcohols or carboxylic acids later is that they will um, for example in drawing propanol okay, many students will remember propanol has uh, three carbon atoms they fill up everything with hydrogen and then they add in the functional group of OH okay, so this is where students tend to make mistake um, whenever we ask for full structural formula or displayed formula again uh, you need to show every bond in the molecule so this is where students tend to omit the OH bond All right so when you are drawing the full structural formula for an alcohol and for carboxylic acid as we will see later uh, you must remember to show the bond between oxygen and hydrogen okay now uh, I'm going to teach you another way to represent organic molecules um, there is no strict definition for this kind of representation method in some textbooks they call it a structural formula um, at higher levels um, we call it the condensed formula okay condensed formula now what exactly is condensed formula when we are drawing out or when we are representing uh, organic molecules it is a hassle for us to draw out every single carbon atom and to show every single bond all right sometimes it's not required we just need to know how the atoms are arranged in the molecule um, that is when we can use the condensed formula um, the condensed formula we collapse the for full structural formula into um, what is found around each carbon atom okay what do I mean by that so let's look at methanol right so methanol we focus on the carbon atom what is found around the carbon atom there are three hydrogen atoms as well as an OH okay so this is the condensed formula or this is the structural formula of methanol I know it looks similar to the molecular formula but let's move on to ethanol first okay so ethanol now ethanol uh, again to get the structural formula or the condensed formula we focus on one carbon at a time so we look at this carbon now what is found around this carbon atom it, you have three hydrogen atoms okay we move on to the next carbon atom now what is found around this carbon atom we have two hydrogen atoms followed by an OH okay so this is the condensed formula for ethanol by writing ethanol as CH3 CH2OH we know exactly how the carbons and the hydrogens are arranged uh, without showing the displayed formula okay let's try for the third one propanol propanol um, one carbon at a time we collapse the um, hydrogens around that carbon atom so for 
propanol if we look at the first carbon atom it has three hydrogen atoms around it the next carbon atom has two hydrogens around it and then the next carbon atom has another two uh, hydrogens around it followed by OH okay so we can represent propanol using a condensed using a um, simpler formula uh, in the form of CH3, CH2, CH2OH and lastly for butanol if you have been following I'm just going to write down the formula CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2OH alright so um, again we have learned two new things one is full structural or displayed formula whenever the question asks for a full structural formula or displayed formula you need to show every bond in the molecule using a line all right uh, there's another way of representing organic molecules which is called the condensed formula in the condensed formula um, we can actually show how the atoms are arranged without drawing out the displayed formula but rather we condense we collapse all the hydrogens around each carbon atom or we collapse all the atoms around um, each carbon atom so we focus on one carbon atom at a time and then we look at what is around it and we represent what is around it now that we have looked at the structure and the bonding in alcohols we're going to look at now the physical properties for alcohols carboxylic acids we are not too concerned um, with the viscosity and flammability anymore but we're going to focus on melting point boiling point and solubility all right now um nothing has changed when we move on to alcohols let's take a look at maybe your ethanol okay this ethanol again all the atoms in the molecule are non-metals so we can conclude that it has simple molecular structure um, with again your weak intermolecular forces of attraction all right that can lead us to conclude that most alcohols would have low melting point and boiling point and as always when the size as the number of carbon atoms in the alcohol increases the size increases melting point um, boiling point will increase so this is the same right but there's something unique about alcohols now if you think about the first few members of alkanes and alkenes they are gases at room temperature all right the boiling points are so low that they are gases at room temperature but if you think about um, methanol ethanol they are not gases right but they are liquids they are in fact volatile liquids what are volatile liquids volatile liquids are those that evaporate very easily okay so essentially um, they have very low boiling points so they kind of evaporate easily all right so why why do alcohols have higher boiling points compared to alkenes and alkenes right slightly higher it, it overall it's still low but it's slightly higher than alkenes and alkenes okay reason being um, it has some kind of special um, intermolecular forces of attraction all right and it's due to the OH group OH functional group and because of the presence of OH group it is capable of a special kind of intermolecular forces called hydrogen bonding okay now hydrogen bonds are slightly stronger than the usual intermolecular forces of attraction so when a molecule is capable of hydrogen bonding the intermolecular forces of attraction become stronger slightly stronger meaning the melting point and boiling point will be higher than a simple molecule without hydrogen bonding okay so the key thing to remember about alcohols is that um, they are not gases they are actually volatile liquids and why is that so because they are capable of forming hydrogen bonding due to the hydroxyl functional group okay solubility in water just think about it um, ethanol 
is the alcohol that is added to alcoholic beverages all right does it dissolve in water does it separate out as a, a separate layer answer is no all right so that already tells you that alcohols are soluble in water all right that is different from alkenes and alkenes which are insoluble and that is also contrary to what we have learned about simple uh, compounds with simple molecular structures so what makes alcohol soluble soluble in water uh, is again due to the hydroxyl functional group okay due to the hydroxyl functional group again it can form hydrogen bonds with water okay so when something can interact well with water it will actually dissolve in it okay so if you look at alcohols um, the, the first few members of alcohols they can actually dissolve in water now the other thing is when n increase that means as the alcohol gets larger and larger your solubility decreases okay it's not too hard to to imagine also as the alcohol gets bigger and bigger you can imagine that the percentage composition of the OH group compared to the entire molecule um, becomes less and less significant so the effect of your OH group um, decreases and rather the the rest of the molecule that is a hydrocarbon the effect of that becomes more significant right so as you get more and more hydrocarbon compared to the small miserable uh, hydroxyl group the alcohol becomes less soluble in water so this is what I've mentioned um, alcohols are actually volatile liquids the first few members um, boiling point melting point increases as the size of your alcohol increases they are soluble in water and the solubility decreases with the size of the alcohol now the explanations um, that I've mentioned the hydrogen bonding strictly is not in the O level syllabus but it's not too hard to understand so um, if you can please make an effort to remember it now we will look at the chemical properties of alcohols meaning the types of reactions that it can undergo now as mentioned any organic compound all right be it uh, an alkane alkene alcohol or carboxylic acid they can all undergo combustion and combustion means a uh, reaction with oxygen okay and um, uh, the same rules apply complete combustion would give you carbon dioxide and water and incomplete combustion um, most of the time would give you carbon monoxide and water okay I'm going to write out the um, equation for the combustion of ethanol and then to point out to you that um, there's something uh, tricky about balancing the equation for uh, combustion of alcohols okay so this is ethanol I've written out in the form of a condensed uh, formula plus oxygen when something undergoes combustion it reacts with oxygen now we're going to look at complete combustion so co2 plus water or water vapor okay so the trick to balancing combustion equations is this that we have to balance in the order of c h and o cho all right so we try to balance carbon first followed by hydrogen and then oxygen so now let's try to balance carbon uh, we have two carbons on the left and then so we need to balance with a two for your carbon dioxide all right and then uh, next we balance hydrogens balance hydrogens there are um, six hydrogens on the left and then so we need to balance with a three now lastly we need to balance oxygen okay uh, most of the time we can just compare um, the oxygens and carbon dioxide and water with oxygen however for alcohols and carboxylic acid you need to take note that it contains the organic compound or the alcohol or the carboxylic acid contains oxygen itself alright so you need to account for that 
what do I mean by account for that? So the number of oxygen um, atoms on the right is equals to seven. All right, four from uh, four from carbon dioxide and three from water. Okay, um, there is already one oxygen in alcohol in ethanol. So in essence, we are missing three more um, oxygens. And how do we? Uh, sorry, uh, we are missing six more oxygen atoms on the left. So how do we get six more? We need to just put a three. Okay. So two things. One, uh, when you write the balance, when you're try when you're trying to balance the equation for the combustion of an organic compound, balance in the order of C, H, and O. And when you're balancing for alcohols or carboxylic acids, take note that the alcohol or the carboxylic acid contains oxygen itself. So you need to minus that from the total number of hydrogen uh, oxygens on the right before you determine how many or uh, what number to put in front of your oxygen molecule. Now the next type of reaction that alcohols can undergo is oxidation. Yeah, so this is a very very important type of uh, reaction that alcohols undergo and it's worth noting all right, very important to note that in the syllabus uh, in the organic chem syllabus in O levels the only homologous series that can undergo oxidation is alcohols right meaning if they tell you that an unknown organic compound undergoes oxidation it must be an alcohol all right so um for a reaction we always need to think of three things reagent conditions and products all right so now we have learned redox so in order to oxidize an alcohol what can we use what can we use to oxidize something obviously many of you all can recall an oxidizing agent so we need to add an oxidizing agent as a reagent now what are the common oxidizing agents that you have learned okay one of them would be your acidified potassium manganate 7 okay which has the formula KMnO4 I hope um, when you are listening to this when you are writing this out immediately there's this image in your mind that um, you can recall that this is a dark purple a very intense purple solution all right in order to use acidified potassium manganate 7 to oxidize an alcohol we need to warm it also okay we need to warm it slightly so these are the reagents and conditions now what happens when you react um, ethanol or an alcohol with an oxidizing agent what does it become okay we're going to take a look but I'm going to give you a prelude when um, an alcohol is oxidized it becomes a carboxylic acid so now we'll look at the specific example of the oxidation of uh, ethanol so what happens when you mix ethanol with acidified potassium manganate 7 and then you heat it is that it will become all right ethanol will be oxidized to the corresponding carboxylic acid corresponding meaning um c equals to two all right so ethanol will give me ethanoic acid all right same thing if we are looking at propanol propanol will become propanoic acid so this is the structure of ethanoic acid okay so oxidation of an alcohol will give you the corresponding acid plus water now how do we balance the equation um, at all levels you are not expected to put in the oxidizing agent all right that means you put KMnO4 it's going to make the equation extremely complicated However, you will learn that in A-levels where you learn to balance uh, redox equations. At O-levels, what is required is that you just need to show that you know that the alcohol um, K 
gain oxygen from somewhere all right from your oxidizing agent so we rep we represent it as a bra square bracket O it means that it took oxygen atoms from somewhere we are not interested we are in um, in writing the formula of the entire oxidizing agent but it took oxygen atoms from somewhere now how many oxygen atoms try to balance the oxygen atoms on the left and on the right um, you I hope you can see that we need two more oxygen atoms okay so to write the chemical equation for the oxidation of an alcohol using oxidizing agent we don't have we simply need to represent the oxygen atoms in square brackets why square back why square brackets because oxygen atoms are not stable they do not exist on their own so by writing it in square brackets we are telling people that we know that um, oxygen atoms they are not they do not exist on its own but rather we got it from somewhere else which is your oxidizing agent then the next very important thing to remember is that when you oxidize an um, alcohol you will get the corresponding um, uh, acid so in an oxidate uh, at least in the O levels oxidizing um, an alcohol there will be no change in number of carbon atoms okay so if you mem if you remember this it will serve you well in some questions when you oxidize an alcohol there is no change in the carbon atoms all right why why am i emphasizing this is because uh, students like to do this so i have um uh, ethanol so and what is the product of oxidation they will remember that uh I will form a COOH and then they will just write C2H5 over here. Okay, this is not correct because if you check sim by simply replacing OH with COOH, you are increasing the number of carbon atoms by one. Okay, so this is a very common mistake that students tend to make. Now, other than using an oxidizing agent, uh, sometimes in under certain conditions alcohols can also be oxidized by oxygen in air all right for that you need a, a catalyst which is a bacteria okay so in this case we are looking at the um, reaction of your ethanol with oxygen in the air all right so we represent it by o2 o2 okay and then the product is the same we get the corresponding acid followed by water okay so the only difference um, in this equation as compared to the previous one is that now instead of writing it as two bracket O now we are saying that the ethanol is reacting with the oxygen molecule present in air okay as for the previous one where we wrote two bracket o it's telling um, people who are reading it that the alcohol is reacting with an oxidizing agent it's taking oxygen from an oxidizing agent so as mentioned at the start uh, for alcohols and carboxylic acids we are interested in the fourth uh, part which is preparation how do we prepare alcohols meaning what reactions um, can lead to the formation of alcohol as a product in fact at this point we have already learned one reaction okay, if you recall in the past few lessons which reaction did we learn that can lead to the formation of an alcohol the answer is the hydration of alkenes okay if you recall when we add water or when we add steam when we add water or uh, when we add steam to an alkene what happens is that we will add a H and an OH and that will give us an alcohol all right your alcohol functional group is here so as mentioned hydration of to, to prepare uh, ethanol we can perform hydration on ethene um, 
hopefully you have already memorized for hydration we need 300 degrees celsius 60 atmosphere and phosphoric 5 acid catalyst okay so in this case i'm going to write out the equation this is ethene reacting with water and then the product is an alcohol now the product is ethanol now notice once again that there is only one product form so we are combining two um, uh, reactants but only one product is formed so this is an addi addition uh, reaction Now the next method uh, for preparing alcohol is new. It's very important because it's very often tested also. Okay, it's the fermentation of glucose. Okay, glucose um, has this formula. So the very first thing that you must learn for this method is how to write the chemical equation. So when you perform a fermentation, you actually get ethanol and you will get carbon dioxide gas okay so first thing you must learn how to write the equation next the, um, fermentation of glucose requires a very very specific set of conditions and what are the conditions uh, number one you need a yeast catalyst okay we have learned before that a catalyst speeds up the rate of a reaction uh, yeast is a form of a uh, enzyme catalyst or a biological catalyst okay and at this point it will be good if you can recall what are some properties associated with catalyst we'll come back to that in a while this reaction must take place at 37 degrees celsius all right or it's optimal at 37 degrees celsius next it must be um, performed under anaerobic conditions what do i mean by anaerobic meaning there should be no oxygen okay the, the reaction must take place in a condition where there is no oxygen in there okay now um why does the re uh, why does the reaction or uh, why does the preparation need such a specific set of conditions um, it largely um, th there's a lot of meaning to it right so let's go through the meaning now if you can recall catalysts um, they are highly specific and they are highly selective selective meaning they will only work under certain conditions over a very narrow range of temperatures over a narrow range of ph okay let me just write it down okay so um now the reason why the uh, reaction must be conducted at 37 degrees celsius what happens when the temperature goes higher all right your enzyme your back your yeast will be denatured okay the structure of your enzyme will change and it will no longer be able to catalyze the reaction so the reaction will stop all right so that's why the temperature control is very important for fermentation next um, why must there be no oxygen this one we have learned already okay what happens when there's oxygen what happens when there's oxygen and you have alcohol uh, alcohol being produced all right think about the reaction that alcohols can undergo so if there's oxygen your alcohol can actually react with the oxygen to become your carboxylic acid all right and that is not um, that's undesirable because we want to obtain the alcohol we want to 
prevent it from becoming something else. The next important thing that we need to know for this is that when you perform a uh, fermentation, right, we will only be able to get about 15% alcohol, right, meaning the mixture, in the mixture, you will only get about 15% of alcohol dissolved in water. You cannot get a concentration of alcohol that is higher than that. Now, why is that so? Again, it's due to the um, uh, selectivity of your enzyme catalyst because when you get too concentrated alcohol, the structure of your enzyme will also change and then it will stop functioning um, as a uh, catalyst, then your reaction will stop. All right? So you can only get a maximum of 15% alcohol through fermentation. Now some of y'all who are um, more resourceful, you may be asking, hey, but you know, there are some um, alcohols in hard liquors in the stores that has alcohol concentration that's higher than 15. All right, there's vodka or some other um, China liquor, hard liquor that has concentrations of up to 50%. How do we get that? Okay, how do we get for concentrations higher than 15%? What we need to do is of course to perform a fractional distillation first. Okay, fractional distillation to obtain your pure alcohol. And then um, we can mix them with water to form any percentage that um, we hope to achieve. Okay, so through fermentation, the maximum um, concentration that you will get is 15% alcohol. Um, for higher concentrations, you need to distill it first. You need to obtain pure alcohol through distillation and then you mix it with water again. Now, um, in the lab, when we perform fermentation, it will look something like this. So we will mix your glucose with yeast and then um, we control the temperature to be about 37 degrees Celsius and then um, we must exclude air. Now some of y'all may be thinking, hey, how do I exclude air? Um, there are a few techniques that we can do in the lab. All right, um, I shall not go too much into that. Um, but one way is to flush is to flush the solution or is to bubble nitrogen into the uh, solution so by bubbling nitrogen into the solution before we start the reaction it can actually uh, push out all right any oxygen present that's dissolved in the solution that's present in your reaction flask okay another more advanced technique in the lab is called freeze pump tor um, that one is way beyond the syllabus all right so if you are interested um, you can go and google um, but it's definitely not required in the syllabus now um, if you perform it in the lab now um, this is the setup there will be a stopper that's connected to a delivery tube and it will be inserted into a, a solution or a test tube of lime water now what is the purpose of that What's the purpose of that? Um, one of the product of fermentation is carbon dioxide. All right. So if the fermentation is successful or if the fermentation has started, we will actually get an indication. We will see a white precipitate forming. So whenever you see a white precipitate forming, it means that fermentation has taken place. Okay, so this setup uh, is also very, very um, useful because the lime water, it actually prevents oxygen from going into the flask. All right, um, when you have a solution, your, your oxygen cannot simply go back into the flask. All right, so we say that the lime water is acting as an airlock. It locks out the air from 
um, the reaction flask. Now the last thing that we need to learn uh, for alcohols is some uses. Uh, this one should be quite straightforward. Uh, it's used in alcoholic beverages. It's used as a solvent in paints, perfumes. Now um, we have learned uh, there are two types of solvents, your water and organic solvent. So alcohols represent a type of organic solvent. So whatever that cannot dissolve in water, but in organic solvents, we can use ethanol as the solvent all right and then uh, fuel in cars and cooking okay but not so much anymore 